strain my mouth with a muzzle. While the wicked are before me, I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing or meditating. The fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. He says, first of all, you made me angry, and I didn't want to sin with my tongue. I didn't want to sin with my mouth. So I stood silent, and I meditated with fire. I meditated while the fire burned, and then I meditated. And after I meditated, it says, then I spoke with my tongue. I got underlined here. Think before you speak. If we could just learn to do that little thing. I am, not, I am not good at that. I am more of a speaker than thinker. I need to learn how to think before I speak. Because I don't realize that this is the trigger to the most powerful weapon on earth. Think before you speak. The problem with the tongue is it does more damage to the receiver than it does to the sender. Because I can tell you how whatever I think and then walk away and be hungry. <laughs> right? I go. I, I can say something and just just hurt you, and then and then go home and think, what am I going to eat for dinner? Where the receiver has been devil. I can't believe. You said that. I can't believe that came out of your mouth. I can't believe you made me feel that way. I can't believe that you have a key, an unauthorized key to my heart or my emotion. Mm -hmm. He says, I, I, I had to pause for a minute. I had to meditate. I was so angry that I didn't want to say something that I was going to regret. So I stopped. I paused. I meditated. I got a couple of men of God that in whom I talk to and in whom I counsel with and in whom, whom I trust my secrets to. And when it's time for them to speak, I get my pen and my paper ready because I never know when they're going to say something that's going to change my life and I don't want to miss it. So I write it down. Here in the book of Psalms, the author is saying, you know what? Let me give you the greatest piece of advice. Think before you speak. Because the tongue is the most powerful weapon on earth. Let's go to Psalms 141. Psalms 141. And that says, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Can you imagine, now this is wisdom, church. Whoever's, whoever's saying this now is saying this out of wisdom. They're not saying this out of pride. They're not saying this out of anger. They're not saying this out of hatred. They are saying this out of wisdom. They are saying, God, do me a favor and set an angel over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips because sometimes my tongue will say and do things that I didn't intend it to do and I never intended to say. You know what, the one thing that I have a problem with uh, social media is that there is something that gets lost in translation. I may text one thing and, and it, I may not mean to harm anyone in that text and yet they take it wrong. Or they may have not meant to have put it that way, or they may have not meant to say that, but nonetheless, I have interpreted it in my own emotional way. And I've interpreted it wrong. Because in communicating, if I was able to look at you, you can see my facial expression and understand that I'm not angry, and understand that I'm not hurt, and understand that I'm not sad, and understand that I'm not trying to hurt you. But because you can't see my face, and you can't look into my eyes, and you can't hear the pitch and tone of my voice, you take it wrong. See, so he says here, he says, set an angel over the doorposts of my lips so that you, can you imagine an angel standing over your tongue like this say that is this is but if it don't let me 
You better not stop. Come on. I need, I need like a whole army of angels. I need to like get it approved, pre-approved. Like uh, God, uh, Victor said this earlier today. He wants to get that approved. Is it okay if he can go ahead and says that? And then God's going to, oh, God's going to say, oh, no, no. What was he thinking? You, you, you know, it just exit out with a red marker and then cover some things and respell it and, and, and then turn it around and then send it back to me. And it turns out to be, don't say nothing at all. <laughs> if ever in doubt, be quiet. If you don't know what to say, don't try to say something. Just <laughs> set a uh, angel over my lips. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Almost done, almost done, almost done. Second Corinthians chapter two verse one. Second Corinthians chapter two verse one. Now, see, I, I just I just I can't get I, I can't I don't want to leave here today without making sure that there is an impression on you now that that this this tongue and that words that come off that they they tear down and they disrupt uh, they anger, they hurt. I can, I can, I, I wrote down in one of my notes here, I said 99 things right, but I said one thing wrong. Right? They will never remember me for the 99 things I said right. They will only remember me for the one thing I said wrong. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 5 says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So don't go to church to a certain church because the preacher is good with his words. Go to a certain church because the preacher demonstrates the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit, sometimes you don't have to say anything. Can you say amen right there? Because that's the person that I long to be. That I be remembered for the things that I did according to the Spirit, not things I said according to my flesh. Because if you ain't careful, I'm mean. I tell you up. I be, I be since, since, since a kid. I used to go home. I, they used to make fun of me, and I go home and think, how how I get them back? What could I say? What's just the meanest thing I could say? Just the meanest. I start sizing you up and be like, hmm. You ever come against me? I know what I'm gonna say. Start picking out flaws. You ever done that? You ever seen an enemy and been like, start picking out their flaws? Be like, let me, let me, as soon as you just say something, I'm ready, <laughs> right? So he's so 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 the author uh, is saying, listen here, man. You know what? I, I you can never go and tell anybody, man. He talked me into it. He talked me into it. He talked. No, you can go back and say, you know what? There was demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, period. That's it. God moved. God blessed. God changed. God came in. God turned around. God fixed it. And it wasn't through many words, but it was through demonstration. I am very, very much attracted to demonstration. I am very, very much attracted to demonstration. I have heard some very, 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 very good ministers, some very good preachers. And let me tell you something. You know what? It's the ones that demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit, though, that I remember the most. Ooh, my God. Almost done here. Let's go to James chapter 3.
That's why I think for me with words, I think for me with words is, is uh, When words are communicated back and forth, you can pick out certain certain aspects of a sentence and let it affect you for a, a very, very long time. You let it hurt you. Uh, that's why I call this an unauthorized key. It's unauthorized because when you begin to engage in conversation, when you begin to engage in, in, in back and forth, then you are assuming that the other party is as excited about the project as you are, has your best interest in mind, has all, and, and yet, and when they, when you finally have gave them your ear, that's why it says be careful the little ear, what you hear, because it might get into your mind and in your heart and say, I never authorized that feeling. Church. I never authorized that emotion. I never authorized, and yet you unlocked the key you came in and you made me feel in such a way, right? James chapter 3, verse 1. James chapter 3, verse 1. I think that's 1, right? We're going to keep the Lord. James chapter 3, verse 1 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. That's a whole sermon in itself. Uh, let's go to two. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. The tongue is so set among your members that it defiles the whole body. It defiles the whole body. A couple of weeks ago, I warned you of the judgment of God that was coming. The judgment of God that was coming. And God is going to use your own words and your own actions and your own faithlessness and your own blasphemy and your own iniquity against you. See, church, see, the, the, here it's saying, look at how big a ship is, and yet it's just turned by the utter. He says, look at how we do a horse. We can control a horse if we can control his mouth. Uh, is what happens today, and I, I'm just as guilty of it because I'm a very, very big fan of Twitter. Um, Twitter, if you don't know what Twitter is, Twitter is you can have followers and I can give you out a thought without engaging in conversation. I can tell you what I'm thinking, but I don't want you to tell me what you think back. Where Facebook, you can carry on a, a conversation. Um, you can, you can have a, a conversation on Facebook. You can put something and they can say something back and then you can return. On Twitter, it's not that kind of a social media. It's more of like, I'm going to tell you what I think, but I don't want to know. You know I'm, I'm not saying it. I'm saying I'm giving you a point. I'm making a statement. I'm not uh, uh, opening up uh, an engagement of conversation. Amen? And so I really don't care for Facebook, so I'm not really on there very much. I don't really get on there very much because that opens me up to your opinion. I can put a picture up and you can like it or not like it. Amen. Well, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get engaged in a conversation over a picture that I may think is world and life changing and you may say, eh. Right? 
So then in social media, then for somehow in the comfort of our own homes, in the comfort of our own living room, we can make a statement or a declaration to the world that can hurt people's feelings, that can make people cry, and then shut our 